Alright lads, welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, the new order as uh, in our latest series, Igor Seferovich of the Russian National Party in the Republic of Komi, Komi Republic. Yes, I'm sure Juan Mateo will be very happy once he sees it. I was actually kind of tossing around a lot of uh, playthroughs in my head. First, I'd kind of settled on, um, I'd settled on doing Yaki and um, Blocky Nazionale Italy. Then I was like, Italy's bugged to shit. So I'm, I'm, maybe I'll do a, a rerun of the scores a playthrough. But then, I'm, but then I was like, you know, just because it scores, it doesn't make it any less buggy. So what I have decided to do, and, and then when it came to the Yaki, when when it came to the Yaki series, ARH was quite right when he pointed out that it was twenty. It was like a full series for a hundred days of content. But I am still doing a Yaki playthrough, and I'll be doing it. Um, I'll be starting it today. And what I'll be doing is. It'll be one singular video, I'll probably title it something like, I don't know, the, the Francis Parker Yaki Experience, and I'll be basically just showing off every event related to uh, Yaki, obviously, I think once you hit about 4% popularity, a uh, Natsok popularity as the US, he gets, um, like the, you know, join the American National Vanguard event, so I'll basically just be showing off all the Yaki events, and of course his presidency. Uh, but to do a full series just for, like, 100 days is a bit ridiculous, so, but, of course, our patron Ryan McCready did want to see a Yaki series, and he shall be getting one. So, that'll, that's obviously not really, like, a, a full series, it's just a singular video. So, what I've settled on is um, a Seferovich playthrough, as well as a Matkovsky playthrough, yeah. Um, I, I was going to do Seferovich and uh, Vasilevsky, however, I just kind of decided I don't want to be dealing with Central Siberia, it's just a, it's just a big mess. So, yeah. I'll stick with uh, Central, uh, no, no, not Central Siberia, uh, Shafarovich and Matkovsky. And then I'm really, really waiting for Toolbox Theory to come out. I expect it to be out by at least the end of the year. Um, well, well, at most the end of the year, sorry. <laughs> at most the end of the year. And then, of course, once that releases, we can do, um, we might even be doing a Japan playthrough, actually, because apparently Japan's getting a massive uh, fix there as well, a lot of fixes for their, all the buggy stuff there. So, and uh, now, of course, after Toolbox Theory releases, we'll be doing... The Dengist will be doing Dengist Spear or Bundle of Stick Spear. Yeah, I'll call him Bundle of Stick Spear. Um, we shall be doing Kaganovich. Um, we might do Sarav again. Haven't really. Th yeah, m maybe Sarav. You can get a lot. You can get a lot of money as Sarav. Uh, you can get, actually get a lot of money as Wagner as well. I might play Wagner too. Um, we'll, we'll be playing Thatcher, and we shall be playing Bennett. And I think that's kind of all the money people out the way. Yeah, that that's most of the money people. So yeah, off we go. Now, the New Order. A new order has ascended upon the world with the triumph of the Axis powers in the Second World Conflict. The world has been forever changed. Yesterday's great empires are now dust under the boots of today's victors. A German lands on the moon as Mustache Man fades. In America, the old system lies shattered. The Mediterranean's power balance lies on the knife's edge. China, little more than a slave of Japan, begins to transform itself. And in Russia, long-damned warlords realize their destiny. Good. Now, call me. There we are. Now... As the West Russian Revolutionary Front collapsed at the end of the West Russian conflict, it was in Siktivkar, capital of the Komi ASSR, that the civilian government of the front found themselves in. From the witches' brew of WRRF officials, Soviet political exiles, refugees, and those who would be unwelcome in other statelets, the Komi Republic took form, establishing a constitution and democratic institutions which served to end the cycles of violence that had afflicted it. However, all is not well in the Republic. Political conflict and scheming is reaching a crisis point, and it seems that the days of this democracy are limited. Very limited indeed. Now, the sick Tivkar. Actually, no, I'll read uh, Voznesensky first, yes. Nikolai Voznesensky, controversial populist. Daily political power gain minus 0.1. Consumer goods factories minus 10%. That's pretty good. Stability minus 5%. And ideology drift defense plus 15%. Originally only a middle level Soviet statesman, Nikolai Alexeyevich Voznesensky found himself as the only gar um, gar guarantor of democracy. Flawed as he is in a small piece of the former Soviet Union, being remarkable among his peers for extraordinary talents in the economic science and, and administrative work, Voznesensky was chosen by the Red Army staff on the eve of the West Russian conflict to oversee the recovery mission in the Komi ASSR. For his service to the Soviet um, province, Voznesensky acquired a considerable popularity among the people of Komi who saw him as the benevolent statesman wishing to put the benefit of the common man ahead of the bickering and intrigues between the power-hungry Soviet cliques. As at the uh, as the result of endless power plays between the front and the hardline communist bureaucrats in Siktivkar, the now president of the Komi ASSR, Voznesensky, remained as the sole figurehead in the Republic who could boast about the public support. Disillusioned with the orthodox, um, uh, nah, mar yeah, haven't actually come across that one before. Uh, what did I say? Red book, maybe. I'll say red. Yeah. 
uh, Red Dogma and remaining bitter about the incompetence and pettiness of the Soviet higher-ups that nearly brought Comey to destruction, he reshaped the political system of the Republic into a representative democracy where the voice of every man or woman can be heard and will be heard, breaking away with the single-party dictatorship. Although the hard efforts of Vosnesensky brought daily bread and a sense of confidence for average Comey citizens, the reputation of Siktivkar brought many unsavory people to the city who seek nothing but to eliminate the democracy for of Comey through her, through her own institutions. But challenges to Vosnesensky come not only from the extremists but also from his fellow democratic politicians who questioned the capability of Vosnesensky to maintain the Republican values, citing his abrasive and inappropriate behaviour for a man of his position and his embarrassing ties to various socialist groups. However, despite the political pressure, Vosnesensky is not a person who wants to abandon the system he envisioned for, or he envisioned without a fight. Good. Now, the Siktivkar Arsenal, Division Recovery Rate minus 5%, War uh, Conflict Support minus 10%, and Division Attack and Defense, uh, or Division Attack and Core Territory plus 20%, that's a really good, and Division Defense and Core Territory plus, 20, uh, plus 10%. Beneath the city of Siktivkar lies a practical treasure trove of Soviet technology and weaponry. Vats, uh, vats and canisters of lethal revenge weapons were stored here before the front collapsed, and they have found a new usage among the defenders, amongst the defenders of the Republic. The gas is potent, and the ability to scorch the lands of our enemies is an effective tool, but those who control the Arsenal wield a disproportionate amount of influence, of course. Now, the Clash of Shadows, minus 6% political, uh, political power gain, minus 18% division recovery rate, minus 35% ideology drift defense, and minus 0 0.01 daily social democrat, social liberal, and uh, daily authoritarian democratic support. The Republic is afflicted by a scourge that makes itself plainly evident if one bothers to look behind the curtains of the various movements occupying Siktivkar. The legion of manipulators, radicals, and would-be shadow masters afflict the Republic like a pox. Their influence drives much of Comey society. The paramilitaries move on their orders. The National Assembly carries out their machinations. And every day, democracy spirals towards a final crescendo of clashing plots, indeed. Now, a place for us all, or a place for all of us. Daily political power gain plus 0.25, division organization minus 5%, uh, stability minus 10%, and conflict support plus 15%. The list of ideologies represented among the ruins of Russia is long, yet it still has its outcasts and lost ideologues. Those people who could not find a home among the ruins, those who have been cast out because of ideas too radical or alien, they have come here. As a result, Comey has one of the most diverse political environments on Earth, and also one of the most dangerous ones indeed. Now, the last year of the Vosnesensi. Our ruling coalition is headed by the most left-wing democratic faction, the Vosnesensi, under Nikolai Vosnesensky. Under their guidance, Comey has seen significant improvement, rebuilding from the bombs, lowering the death toll, and attracting refugees to our towns and cities. However, all is not quite well. Vosnesensky's ties to the far left, especially Andrei Zhidanov, are quite alarming and a source of constant discomfort among the more conservative members of the coalition. Time will only tell if the Vosnesensi will be able to keep their position at the head of the party, or if another wing will take their place. Now into the unknown. Months of rigorous preparation, days of campaigning, enjoy it or dread it, participate, it or, or participate in it or flee from it. The election comes all the same. Now comes the trial of democracy and the ruling with it. Each and every preparation that we have done for this event will now either pay off or let us down. This critical election decides our fate and the uh, future. Some doubt our, chances and, uh, doubt our chances and others wish us dead, but no matter what happens, democracy will always prevail in the end. Yes, it will be the, the democracy of Igor Seferovic and compassionate conservatism. Now, the affairs of the National Assembly. As much as our detractors enjoy condemning our Republic for its excess of political intrigue and the occasional bout of violence, there is more to Comey than scheming and intriguing. The policies of the National Assembly, while bitterly contested as all things are, are a critical element for the thousands of people who are affected by the government's machinations each year. Opening the National Assembly for the year, appointing new party whips, and ensuring that everything functions as normal shall ensure that the functions of the Republic's institutions are as strong as ever. Additionally, this will give us the opportunity to cut through precedent and tradition, changing long-standing laws and improving life for the multitudes of citizens of the Republic. Through the tactful exercise of state power, backed by the people, anything becomes possible indeed. Now, do we want to buff anything here? I don't think we do. Yeah, I don't think there's anything we really want to see here. We'll be going with Shefarovich. You know what, let me just take a quick moment to see if Shefarovich can peacefully unite with anyone. I'm done, I have to do this. I'm going to quickly pause the recording because I don't have to... Don't, don't want you sitting there waiting for me to do this. Well, that was interesting. Apparently we actually can peacefully unite with uh, other warlords as... Well, not other warlords, but other uh, regional regional unifiers as um, Shef Erevich. Interestingly, uh, in, uh, interestingly, interestingly enough, we can't unite with um, 
Batav, which is, I think, is ridiculous. You should absolutely be able to peacefully unite with Batav. That's nonsense. But we can peacefully unite with Matkovsky in Magadan. Not Petlin or Warble, just Matkovsky. And that's the only person we can peacefully unite with in the entire game, which I think is nonsense. Um, apparently, uh, Krasny Ars can unite with um, Magadan, though. Or, or can they? Let me quickly check that. Let me check that. Uh... Yeah, Krasnyars can uh, unite with Magadan, but of course, you know, Krasnyars doesn't have a focus tree, and they also don't have a regional unification thing, unlike, say, um, Gainey, where even though you don't have a focus tree, if you actually unite, if you conquer everyone, you actually get a, you know, a regional tag in a, a news event, but Krasnyars can, no. Andreev, no. Unfortunate, but, um, yes, let us bump up, um, Magadan, because we'll uh, peacefully unite with them. There we are. I'll keep a close eye on them, make sure they win all around them. And then um, when they get into conflict with Central Siberia, I'll probably just delete all their troops. And then we'll peacefully unite <laughs> the two dengists. <laughs> now, let's go. Also, in this series, like, I think... No one wants to go through what we went through with um, Tavaritsky, where it was like, obviously the first episode is the introductory reading and lore video, but I, I actually think that the f like episode 2, 3, and 4 was literally nothing but reading. Um, I think towards the end of episode 4, I think we got the Order of St. George, maybe, and, and, and maybe vlogged, I'm not sure, but it was hell. Um, in this series, and in all future Comey series, I've said this before, we will, apart from the focuses, obviously we'll be reading the focuses, but apart from that, we will only be reading events relating <clears throat> relating to the character that we're playing. So, in this series, we'll only be reading the focuses and events that are somehow relate to Shefervich. Like his introductory thingy, and he doesn't, he doesn't have a whole lot of events. Um, yeah. Because I'm just, it, it's, I, I'm not doing it again. And I never will do it again. Because it was three episodes of just talk, 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 talk. And it was hell. Not happening this time. Now, here we are. Let me unmute the game. And uh, immediately then pause the music. And he said... Now... The Komi Republic, the failures of Nikolai Bukharin, the German invasion, and the defeat of the West Russian Revolutionary Front against the German Reich, bled the people of Russia far too much, subjecting them to unimaginable horror and destruction and destitution for a little gain. Rather than the workers' utopia promised by the Soviet government, the communist experiment ended in failure, as apocalyptic warfare scorched West Russia for the second time in two decades. The former government of the Komi ASSR, a faithful band of Soviet loyalist politicians, gladly went along with Grand Marshal Clement Roshlov's plans for the restoration of the Soviet government, and Komi, despite the reservations that its highly political deviant population held, gladly slipped into the pocket of the front until the West Russian conflict and the transition of the front's capital to Siktivkar. The war, the political failures of the front, the final assassination of Alexei Rykov, like, that's, I keep forgetting about that. Or not forgetting, but every time I read it, I think, I just think, wow. Like, the fact that right that, um, Rykov is still alive in, like, the 50s is insane. And the bombings of the Presidium of the West Russian Revolutionary Front to mark the last straw for the Komi government, however, Nikolai Alexeyevich Vazensensky, the newly appointed head of the Komi ASSR, took executive action to declare independence from the front, being aided in his operation by a slew of former WRF, uh, WRF um, politicians, including Mikhail Andreevich Suslov, and Mikhail Andreevich Suslov, a uh, foreign minister of the front, and, and, and Andrei Alexandrovich uh, Zhidanov, a prominent official of the Comintern. With the secession of the Komi ASSR from the front under a newly declared republic and the loss of yet another capital, the, pol the political cohesion of the front dissolved and more and more separatists ate away at the WRF's armies before operations could be launched to put down their rebellions and warlords. With the democratic nature of the Komi Republic becoming well known throughout West Russia and the developed city of Siktivkar becoming swollen with refugees from other less accommodating warlord states, a climate of political... Um, uh, political radicalism began to fester within the Republic, fed by, uh, fed by Vazensensky's collaboration with the Zhidanov's uh, Reds, and the underground influence of extremist politicians who had been set free from the many former gulags in the region. Political violence, grand scheming, and paramilitary activity became commonplace, with the corruption um, within the Republic's armed forces doing nothing to help matters despite the efforts of taunted officers such as Petro Grigorenko and Ivan uh, Karolkov. Now, the state of the Komi Republic. The state of the Republic in 1962 is hardly one conducive to functional d uh, democracy or civilized life. Crime is at a recent high with constant paramilitary street battles, um, 
shattering the silence on the streets of Sigtivkar. The plots of shadowy ideologues are constantly pit against uh, each other. Now let me just quickly... No, sorry about that. Where were we? Um, the plots of shadowy ideologues are constantly pit against each other in the form of assassinations, thefts, fraud, assault, extortion and, consp and conspiracy against the Republic. While power is broken within the National Assembly and the Democratic Coalition of relatively centrist parties attempt to keep order and sane governance, Mikhail Suslov's Red Party of Komi on the far left and Lev Gumilyov's Passionary Organization on the far right constantly attempt to bring down the government of the shadows while maintaining a respectable public opinion. Alright. Yeah, is this... Uh, am I going to read... Mm, I'll read this, yeah. Now, the players of the game, the Comey Republic's politicians, are infamous for a particular nature that seems to run through the Republic as a whole, a pseudo-addiction to scheming, backstabbing, and power games. Regardless of whether they personally tolerate such underhanded tactics, the environment of the Republic demands such tendencies, and so there are politicians which survive this unimaginably stressful environment tend to be forged into metaphorical diamonds, master schemers and maneuverers who can manipulate entire parties beneath their thumb. Good. Now, where is he? Oh, really? I have to go to the end. Now, the right, the Passionary Organization, is a singularly bizarre organization in Comey. A, a combination of a social club, a secret society, and an apparatus for a political coalition building. Under the wide-spanning umbrella of the Passionary are Eurasianists, compassionate conservatives, monarchists, and other smaller movements, all united solely by the desire for a new right-wing path for the Republic. The Passionary are easily the most wide-ranging coalition in Comey, stretching to every possible corner of right-wing thought, and as of such, paradoxically both prone to infighting and extremely effective at operating from the Republic. From the Passionary, there is someone for everyone, or so to said, the media outlets controlled by the organization appeal to the people, rallies are held, and the central coalition is forced to look closer and uh, closer towards Passionary affiliated politicians every day. Now, Igor Rostislavovich or Shefervich. Every movement needs a face, and Igor Shefervich is a respectable face indeed. A well respected academic in the Republic, Shefervich heeds the, or heads the moderate moralist wing of the Passionary, the wing most key to gathering public support and the support of the centrists from the National Assembly. Shefervich is one of the most famous voices of the Passionary, and, he, and his calls for a uh, national democracy based off of compassionate conservatism principles are heard around the Republic on widespread venues such as Radio Free Sektivkar, the pre eminent broadcasting service from the Republic. As the left grows larger and more threatening, Shefervich's commitment to democracy and willingness to cooperate with the centre has driven more and more politicians amongst the right wing of the ruling coalition to look his way, seeking deliverance from the red threat. Good. Of course, uh, Sarov isn't here because um, he hasn't really... And I don't think Sarov even makes an appearance in the, um, in the left, in the left section, does he? Yeah, he doesn't. <laughs> Sad Sarov now. Features, fight through the storm of intrigue to save the Republic or bring it crashing down, experiment with the many ideologies and parties present within the Republic and bring one to victory, put an end to warlordism and anarchy, uniting Russia under the flag of one of Comey's many contenders indeed. Now, West Russia. When the Soviet Union of Bukharin collapsed, the Germans thought the Russians broken and defeated. Reich's Commissar at Moscovine was established on Russia's traditional heartland, home of its most important population center. The weak and cowardly Red Army would dissolve into irrelevance and let the Germans build their thousand-year empire at their leisure. The West Russian conflict came as a surprise. A thousand-kilometer-long offensive by the West Russian Revolutionary Front of Grand Marshal Voroshilov, led by some of the best generals of the fallen Union. Commanders such as Georgi Zhukov and Mikhail Tukhachevsky pushed the complacent Germans hard, breaking their line in several areas. For a moment, the whole of RK Moscovine seemed lost. This moment passed and the West Russian conflict took a turn for the tragic. No one within the WRF could agree on what had cost them the initiative. Russian collaborating with the Reich, incompetence from the front itself, treachery from politicians in Siktivkar. No matter the cause, the WRF's offensive stalled out. The Wehrmacht fought back desperately, slowly turning the tide against the Red Army. In this they were aided by collaborators, men flocking to the banner of the Imperial Pretender Vladimir III and the so-called Army of Russian Liberation of Andrei Vlasov. Little by little the front was pushed back until it collapsed. Now West Russia remains as it was in the months following the end of the West Russian conflicts. Frozen in place by the Luftwaffe's cruel terror bombing campaign in the north near Arkhangelsk, the remnant of the WRF endure. Aging Grand Marshal Voroshilov is, is expected to choose a successor. His likeliest candidates are Marshals Tukhachevsky and Zhukov. Sent to govern the military districts of Plesetsk and, and Ukta, the general's absence has done little to change court politics in Arkhangelsk proper. To the south of the front's holding Zai, the Komi, lies the Komi Republic, a democracy born from a secessionist province of the front. President Vosnesensky has managed to steer the young nation mostly successfully, yet increasing political instability from the far left and the far right threaten the Republic. Nevertheless, Komi holds a few trump cards of its own and is a contender for power in the region. 
South of the Front and the West of Komi can be found Vologda, Kostrom and Gorky. Once men of the Front, the soldiers in Vologda rebelled at the thought of continuing to fight fellow Russian soldiers. Since then, they've attempted to sail a perilous course of diplomacy. In this, they are aided by the wealth of Kostrom, a city-state, an important hub of black market trade with Germany. The final member of the trio of breakaway provinces, Gorky is home to some of the Fronts of Veterans, uh, Veterans Armoured Division. Isolated from their former commanders, the men of Gorky live as bandits and raiders. Further south can be found Vyak and Samara, captured by German collaborators in the dying day of the West Russian conflict. Both regions hope to use their veteran armies to secure control of West Russia. The Tsarists and Vyak at least hold on to imperial dignity, being led by the, the legitimate Romanov heir Vladimir III, but he's not though. Their rivals in Samara have nothing in the world but their own force of arms, widely despised for their efforts to help the Germans win the, win the West Russian conflict. The men of the, of the Russian Army of Liberation are cut off from their families west and, and unsure as to their next objective. Why is Samara hated more than... Um, Vyakta. That feels uh, pretty gamey to me. Now, other nation states try to carefully... Eke I love how the AB doesn't even get mentioned. Other nation states try to carefully eke out a living in the ashes and ruins uh, created by the endless uh, German bombings in Bashkiria and in Tartistan. Local populations worries of the resumption of a new Russian civil conflict. Hope to be spared by the rising winds of conflict. In Onega, the men of the anti-red uh, volunteer guard continue their endless watch. Forced by the Finnish Republic to serve as a wall between Finland's new land in Karelia and the Russian anarchy. The men of the guard await. Beyond their borders, the winds of conflict arise in Russia. Where the terror bombing campaigns come to an end, a new conflict to establish supremacy in Western Russia will begin. One likely to forge a new future for Russia. Features put an end to the con to the uh, conflict lord era and unite West Russia under the flag of your choosing. Use your large population and powerful industrial base as, as a springboard to Russian reunification and prepare to retake occupied Russian lands from Germany. Now, AB doesn't even get a mention. Not <laughs> dictating with money off the Arab bar. <laughs> uh, I love to say it every time. Dedicated to soft boy anarchist and, of course, Korean James Bond. Now. I think, uh, do we have any extra national spirits? No, just the Luftwaffe bombing, that's fine. Get cracking on that. But alright, uh, ah. but alright, let's hope you enjoyed today's introductory reading and lore episode. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing and supporting the channel on Patreon. I shall um, shout out to our patron, Ryan McCready. I shall see you down in the comment section of this video. I shall see you in the next video, but until then, goodbye.